Hey, what? Is the 20, 29th of the 4th, 2015. And uh, we're going to be looking at two scriptures today in our teaching at Paradise Now Church, Jesus Christ Ministries Mission. Our midweek teaching, we're going to first look at uh, Job. Let's, if we go to Job and uh, Job chapter 1. <clears throat> verse 12 the scripture confirms scripture and um, we don't just go with one scripture and leave it at that we, we let the Lord lead us by the spirit onto another that may be similar or helpful or may enhance what we're trying to lay hold of Job 1 12 and the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. I like that. And uh, the other verses I want to read is uh, Matthew chapter 4, if we can go there. In Matthew 4... And we'll have a look there. We're going to start reading there in verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it, it, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, said to him, if you really are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and uh, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus replied and said, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And our final verse is 8. Again the devil took him up on uh, an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Just like the devil, isn't it? It's just like the devil. Uh, it, it, he's forever showing, isn't he? He's forever showing the people of the earth and the people of, of God, and the people who uh, think they're of God, is forever tempting and forever showing them the, uh, the things of the world. And if you go to Matthew 4 and verse 4, Jesus, what he says here is, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word proceeds from the mouth of God. We we see the the victory that the man Jesus had here. We see the power and the victory that he had. Um, I mean, he just came off a, a 40 day and 40 night fast. And here's a bit of package, I can tell you now. You know, he could have ate the horse and chased the rhino. <laughs> and probably ate the saddle too. But he had that... Um, blessing that we all can have and all need and that's to uh, prioritize the word in our life it, 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 it was the word that kept the man Jesus right? we, we shall not live by bread but every word right? every word that's that's how we live Jesus said one other occasion that um, the food that I eat, they don't know of. 
The world doesn't know of the food we have. Uh, the food we're going to receive here today, the world does not know of this food. The only food they know of is what they see, what they taste with their, with their senses and their, their taste buds. But we know of the, the food that led it to eternal life. Okay? We have this, the, the supernatural food. We have the supernatural uh, H2O, water. Okay? And uh, the title of our message today is Satan is afraid of the anointing. Is, is that right? Is that correct? Satan is afraid of the anointing. I mean, it's another, it's another ploy of the uh, false prophets and money makers, charlatans. It's another ploy, making money, isn't it, to confuse people and, and have them uh, running around in circles, drawing people to themselves. And uh, let me start by saying that if we go over to John 10, we'll get a little bit more of a view on this. John 10, what I'm trying to say here, what I am going to say. John 10, let's have a look at uh, verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me and I, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You see that? We, we, we see an example there. As we're going to see other examples in a minute of the lying, lying tongues of, of, of the charlatans, the Joyce Meyer people and the Benny Hins and the Crefro Dollars and the um, the Haggies, all the, the American hoopla we see in John 10 uh, verse 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me I mean how simple profound isn't it that Paul the Apostle said you better be careful that they don't de lead you away and distract you from the simplicity of the Christ he said that to the Corinthians the Word of God is so simple. It's so simple that the carnal man and woman and the, the uh, intellectual can't grasp it. I've listened to intellectuals on documentaries on ABC and SBS who uh, they are anthropologists and all sorts of things, you know, and historians and... Uh, women reverends who've done multiple years and even decades of study and they really don't hit the nail on the head you know they really don't hit the bullseye they just don't get it because they're not led by the spirit they're not born of the spirit so my sheep hear my voice does that say there that I mean, how many books have you seen and how many videos have you heard of that have a title similar to this? How to Hear the Voice of God. <laughs> how to Hear the Voice of God. They're out there by the millions. If you want to hear the voice of God, you come to me. That's what they say. Well, that's just total hogwash. That's, I reckon, border on blasphemy. My sheep know my voice. <laughs> it's a granted gift. It's just like the, the five-fold ministry, if you want to call it that, 
Scripture doesn't call it fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. And it's like the, the gifts of, of Corinth, you know, written in the Corinthian writing, Paul the Corinthian. And uh, they're all gifts and they're, and they're given and granted. Right? We're going to look at um, uh, Joyce Meyer in a minute. Another, you know, they're, they're liars. These are liars, these people. Satan is afraid of the anointing. I mean, I've never heard such rubbish. Never heard such hogwash in all my life. Satan's not afraid of the anointing. But Joyce Meyer says he is. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow. Well. You know, if, you're, if you are a sheep, if you are a, 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 a person of God and you hear the word, you will follow. There's no, you don't have to go to no Bible college to do anything. I never went to no Bible college. I never, I never done three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years studying, buying books, how to hear God's voice, and blah blah blah. What hogwash! We're born of the Spirit, washed in His blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel along. I'm part of the family. The family of God. You know, I usually do an ah, you know, like a ah, I get excited and the Lord's moving. And young sister Bridget uh, yesterday texted me and, and she didn't do the ah, but she got her own. The Lord's given her her own little touch and she bounces off the wall. She said, I feel like bouncing off the wall, Pastor. She read some scripture, you know. Boom. She said, "I feel like bouncing off the wall." The Lord touched her, you know. But I, you know, I come with the ow, ow, glory, you know, joy unspeakable. She had, so she just thought, "Well, I'll just bounce off the wall," you know, bang, <laughs> because she's one of the Lord's sheep. And she hears his voice. We don't hold courses here how to hear the voice of God. We, we speak as the oracles of God and those who are of the oracles will hang around. Those who are of the oracles will lap it up and love it and be looking for the gravy. Hallelujah. So I told him a message today, Satan is afraid of the anointing. Oh dear me. We first read from Job, the prophet Job, and we found out that uh, Satan was in the presence of the Lord. Satan was in the presence of the Lord. Okay? And along with that, we had Jesus um, walking side by side with the devil. Yet yeah, Mrs. Meyer says that Satan is afraid of the anointing. Hey? She said that on television on the 16th of, of the 10th, 2003. You track back and, and run a check on it and check a few of the programs she'd done on that date and even related videos, you'll hear what she said. It. I always critique and judge by what comes out of people's mouths to find out who they really are. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The scriptures say, can someone say amen? amen. Right? So we have Satan going out from the presence. He was in the presence of the Lord. You talk about anointing. He's bothered about your little anointing. You know what I mean? I'm not, please don't think I'm putting down an anointing of the Holy Spirit. But uh, for the sake of the subject that we're talking about, 
let me say that uh, Jesus is the anointed one. And he was walking side by side, eh? side by side uh, with the devil. If we go to Matthew, uh, and we go back to chapter 4, and uh, verse 8, Again the devil took Jesus up onto an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And uh, the devil was going. He was trying to tell him, oh, "Look, you can have all that if you just bow down and worship me." But we know that the devil is a liar, don't we? We we know the devil is going to promise you the world and give you nothing, hey? And we know that. The devil even tried to convince God. He, he's, he's not backward and coming forward. If we go to Job chapter 1, let's just go there for a minute. The devil, he, he's not behind the door. Job 1 verse 9. Look at this. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all he has on every side? Haven't you blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land? But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. See that? The devil was trying to convince God. He was lying to God. This is, this is the, the audacity of this foe of ours. It's just like he tries to tell you, oh, look, you know, it, it's, you're never going to overcome sin. It's never going to happen. And he uses even ministers church leaders to, to tell you that. You can't be holy. You can't go free from known sin. That's that lying devil. But the scriptures say Jesus came to set us free. Amen. There's free and there's not free. You know what I mean? That's it. There's no nearly free. It's free or not free. Oh, Joyce Meyer of, of uh, Joyce Meyer Ministries, the Myrie Clay Ministry. Satan is afraid of the anointing. I mean, that is just so ridiculous, hey? That is so ridiculous. Mrs. Meyer, she, uh, this so-called teacher of the Bible, uh, she reckons also that if you spend time with Jesus, <laughs> your anointing will increase. Now that's another lie because the scriptures don't say that anywhere. Your anointing will, in, will increase so the, the capacity of your anointing to do miracles and, and speak with um, uh, uh, diverse tongues and, and, and to uh, to heal and your anointing uh, uh, to be in the office of an apostle or a prophet, whatever, um, is increased at your hand. No, it's not. It's in the hands, as Jesus said, uh, to uh, Salome. He said to this woman, uh, I mean, the, the, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. I can't, I don't have that authority to put your sons on the left and the right of me. Father has already done that. He's already organised all that. That's not for me to do that. <laughs> so we're clearing the road of the debris, aren't we? We're, as we go along, and that's the work and the job of a teacher, an anointed teacher, 
is to clear all the debris off the road and out of our minds and and so we have a, a lucid thinking you know w w that we have a clear view of uh, who we are who God is and who our enemy is and uh, who are our enemies hey this is the work of the spirit of God moving through the the anointed and appointed teacher yeah and, and, and uh, the Lord said it's best that um, a few be teachers because they'll be judged with a more strict uh, uh, judgment so Joyce Meyer as far as I'm concerned is one of the many in deep water <laughs> they're, they're in the soup with Mr Hines and Nobby aren't they hey, that's for sure yes if you spend more time your anointing will increase no it doesn't increase but I will say this if you spend the more time you spend with God with Jesus you and him uh, your conviction your conviction of sin will heighten uh, your love for Jesus will deepen your awareness of who you really are will uh, be lifted and your um, selfishness will be so obvious to you and um, your uh, uh, understanding uh, of what the Lord's called you to do will be blatantly clearer the more and more time you give to the Lord and all of that is there and hidden and, and under covers until we do forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship him and that's a lovely uh, a high a very uh, a very um, uh, high rating of worship is to um, give Jesus uh, priority in your day you know well, there's an event gonna happen there's a, a, a concert or a, the Queen might be coming to town or you know someone of some um, uh, notoriety in the world is coming and everyone's preparing the grand final football or something everyone arranges everything to get there and to get there on time and don't want to miss anything and if we do that for Jesus I tell you what <laughs> I, I reckon the, the little song that the Lord gave me about Job this morning before the meeting it just covers every base it covers every base of, um, of this message what I don't get and tie up today in the message, you'll get it in the song. You, you, that'll just be like the, the mash and gravy around the message, you know. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. <coughs> yeah. Um, there's, we need scripture to confirm what we're saying. Otherwise, it's just our saying and it's powerless it, it, if anything it's um, leading people astray and bringing confusion because that's about all man can do and woman you know if it's not the Lord's you know it, it's usually an endemic concoction isn't it moved by uh, satanic emotion you know just 
coming to my emotional rescue, who, 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 yeah? So the title of the message today, Satan is afraid of the anointing. No, he's not. No. Satan is not afraid uh, of the anointing. Um, Satan is very disrespectful. Right? We we seen that when he took Jesus and said, "What are you going to give him? I'll give you all the kingdoms." But Psalm 24, what does it say? If you open up your Bibles at Psalm 24, what does it say in the first verse of Psalm 24? Right? Hey? I'll go there too, just to brush up. Hey, just to give my teeth a bit of a dental floss. Thing. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth and the Lord's, the, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. You don't think the Lord Jesus knew this? Come on. Satan is a liar. Hey? He's lying to you, he's lying to Jesus, and he's lying to Father. And he lied, and he said, oh, you know, Job's going to desert you. You take his goodies away, and he'll desert you. Oh, look, the song that Father gave me this morning. Beautiful. Just, whoo. I love it. Yeah, so uh, Satan, uh, the devil, uh, if we look in Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, we're going to see a little bit more, aren't we, about Satan and the anointing. About Satan being afraid. Oh, dear. Genesis chapter 3, and let's have a look at verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. There's another lie, isn't it? Hey? He wasn't afraid to get in there. He was he? He wasn't afraid to get in there. Hey? In the midst. Smack bang. In the middle of the garden. Hey? How anointed was... Uh, was Adam and Eve. I mean, these people, they knew no sin. They walked with God in the garden. You talk about anointed. <laughs> oh, come on. They didn't even know anything of the flesh. They had no awareness of it. But the devil, he's afraid of the anointing. Surely... Mrs. Myers, that old housewife of old, surely, hey, who rose to fame and fortune by the hand of her Ahab husband, hey, great um, uh, businessman he is, hey, Dave, Dave Ahab Meyer. Hey? Marketing man in, in, in the States. When we look at all the rise and the fall of these so called prophets and apostles and great men of God, it would, you know, it's a sham, don't we? And one of Hitler's friends um, backing uh, Billy Graham, you know? And Benny Hinn there with uh, that old witch. Uh, Catherine Kuhlman there. Hey? Everything was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. That's the very thing the Holy Ghost said not to do. It's all about Jesus. Then Benny Hinn writes a, a book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. I wonder what Jesus thought of that. And Father. Dear, right, dear, right, dear. Hey? Satan is afraid of the anointing. Oh, dear. That's why you hear all these drips running around the place. Oh, devil, you know, you're doing this and you do that. And... 
hey? They got no idea, really, of what the oracles say. They've obviously been blinded. Genesis 3, 4, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, hey? It's just going to go on. You can do what you like and say what you like. And there's no fear, is there? Hey? No fear. That's what they have on the shirts. You see them around. I've seen them around for years. No fear. Well, that's the devil himself, isn't it? That's the devil himself. <coughs> If we turn in our Bibles to Ecclesiastes, hey? Ecclesiastes. We see no fear, don't we? When we read Ecclesiastes 12, 13, I think it is. 12, 13. Satan is a liar. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Now, as we hear the conclusion of the whole issue of life, I mean, I, I find it very like mind-blowing to read this one verse, I tell you. Talk about simplicity. Talk about cut to the chase. Talk about uh, Bible colleges liquidating, okay? going into... Um, bankruptcy declaring bankruptcy this one scripture will do it all fear God keep his commands this is all that men and women humanity can do huh? God will bring every work into judgment including every secret thing whether it's good or evil, he'll be judging it. Fear God. No fear. Oh. Satan had no fear. Lying his, through his teeth. In, in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Job's going to do this. I mean, he's the created. Telling the creator. And isn't that what... Um, Joyce Meyer and Benny Hinn and Joel Osteen and Crefro Dollar and the list goes on and on with Hillsong and Hellsong and you know, Hollywood seven rooms to rent until your name goes up in lights, you know. It's it this is what they're all doing. They're all telling God, you know, the way it's gonna be. It's called positive thinking. <laughs> <laughs> positive thinking right? that we told Eve the devil told Eve the devil told God Father himself and he told Jesus and he, he put before Jesus the, the kingdoms of the and the glory of the kingdoms of the earth and said have a look at that the same way he dealt with Eve he said you're going to be like God and Kenneth Copeland ministers that we're little gods. We're little Jesuses. And the people love it so. Don't they? Oh, they love it. They lick their chops. They're all living in the fairyland off with the pixies thinking one day I'll be rich too. <laughs> I tell you now, you will not be. They'll only ever be the one driving the, in the Learjet. That'll be Ken or Barbie. That'll be, you know, Benny in the Jets. B -b -b Benny in the Jets. Fear God and keep his commands. Hey, respect the Lord by keeping his commands. Joyce is not doing it. Joyce is not doing it. The haggies of the world and the hags, they're not doing it. 
right? The John Haggies and their Haggy wives. They're not doing it. The, the Lord said through Paul, don't even think beyond what is written. But they're gone the extra mile there and they're doing what's they're doing what's not written. What well, what well, beyond what is written, I should say. They're doing beyond what is written. Tells me there's no benchmark. There's no line drawn. They're running with the world. They, they said, get out of the box, you know. Get out of that gospel box. Think beyond the, the square, four square gospel. Think beyond. That's when you're going to move into all kinds of trouble, deception and uh, uh, self-deception. And, and delusion and visions of grandiose and uh, abominations. Every single man and woman in the Bible that went beyond what is written, have a look. Just It's simple. As the mere cat says, simple. Have a look at every single one of them. Old Testament, New Testament. They ceased respecting God and doing what he said. Uh, keeping his commands. And they all ended up in the trash can, every single one. Some of them were howling with tears, thinking, oh, my tears will change God's mind. Like Esau. Esau never saw, did he? You know what I mean? He, he never saw what was coming because he was still had that venom in his system from his mother Eve. He still had that once saved, always saved attitude. See, he just sort of went on thinking, you know, oh well, it's all right. You know, you know, I'm not going to die. God will understand. I'm just having a, you know, a little bit of a relapse. God will understand. As Joyce Meyer would say, well, ah, I was lukewarm, you know, but I still had enough of Jesus in me to be saved. Had that little piece of him left. <laughs> what was it? His toenail. One of the ingrowns. Hey? God understands. I mean, look, we can't. What do you think it is? You know, you expect us to be saints or something. There's only a few of them and they're in the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, you're a Hitler, Paul? You're just such a... I don't know. So demanding. Demanding? <laughs> Jesus said, be holy as I am holy. Jesus said, be perfect as I am perfect. So you want to know what sort of perfect? As he is perfect. Jesus said to the prostitute, Magdalene, I'm not going to condemn you now, but I've told you what the right thing is to do. Now go and do it and don't go sin no more. Don't do it again. Satan is afraid of the anointing. Obviously that will lead people to believe and to see things like, oh, well, I need to get an, a, a book on the anointing, you know. I might need to buy a book on the anointing. Look, they'll sell your pigeons off the story bridge. I'm telling you. Hey? That's, the devil will sell your pigeons off the story bridge. He's a liar. And the father of every lie. Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to the writings of Timothy. Hey, we just go over to Timothy for a tick. See what Paul's saying to Tim. Yeah. 
2 Timothy 3 and the verses 3. Sorry, 2 Timothy 4 and the verses 3. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. See that? The time will come. We're in those days right now. They, it says they will not endure. We've got a double emphasis here as we go along. Just wait a minute. We've got a double emphasis. They will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, they're not going to go along with it forever. They started off with the sound doctrine, but they're not going to go on enduring. They're not going to go on in it. Well, this is a good one for once saved, always saved, isn't it? They have itching ears. They're looking for their own teachers, aren't they? Right? They're looking for teachers that don't have sound doctrine. <laughs> Have you ever told people, oh, you know, that church you go to, it doesn't have sound doctrine? They said, yeah, I know. But they still go there, don't they? <laughs> That's them here. You're looking at the picture. Show them their picture one day. Next time you see that person that says, yeah, I know that they, you know, they don't teach the, the um, unadulterated word and truth. Say, look, I, wanted you, I just wanted to show you. I didn't even know I had a picture of you. And here you are here in 2 Timothy 4, 3. That's you there. Smile. You're on biblical camera. Now we go to the double emphasis. Just to concrete it. Oh, I love. Don't you just love Paul's writings? 2 Timothy 3, 4. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. You see that? They had it. They had the truth. <laughs> they had it. But they didn't go on in it. They didn't endure the sound doctrine. They were looking for teachers that didn't have sound doctrine. And they... They turn their ears away from the truth, deliberately. And deliberately turned aside to fables, stories of men and women. You know, like Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer and Creflo Dollar. They always got these stories, haven't they? Always got these fables. They don't like to speak as the oracles of God. If a man is to minister, let him minister as the oracles of God. Not stories and sayings of the world, the men and women. Oracles of God. And let him minister with the ability that I have given him. You, you, there it is again. You don't have to go and learn how to minister. But they do teach them how to preach, don't they? In the Bible college. They teach you how to preach. You can't teach someone how to preach. You're either a preacher or you're not. If you don't have it, it won't be coming out. If you have it, no one can stop you. You just can be preaching everywhere. You have to stop. <laughs> You just keep preaching and preaching and preaching. You'll be preaching there day and night. If it's in you. If you're gifted and anointed and appointed to do it. I get it all the time. I stop preaching to me. Can't you hold a conversation with someone without preaching to them? No, sorry about that. I make no excuses, but I'm a preacher. Hello. <laughs> They will turn their ears away. 
turned their ears away. Now let's go to 1 Timothy. Is it 1 Timothy? No, it's not. It's Thessalonians. I love these two sit together beautifully, you know. They're uh, like snags and mash, aren't they? Sausages and mash. These two sets. Right? Uh, now let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2.10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they would believe the devil. I mean the lie. <laughs> That's where the lies come from, the devil, isn't it? They're going to believe the devil, just like Eve. See, Eve didn't want to re receive that. God told her and Adam, "Don't touch the, <coughs> don't touch the tree," but she didn't want to receive it. See? We know that she never received it, because if she received it, she wouldn't have touched the tree. You know, are, are we receiving the word? Are we receiving it? Yeah, I receive that and I take that. For they're the only ones that he gives the right to be, become the sons of God. Those who receive the word, those who receive Jesus, accept him and embrace him and, and cling. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for my crown on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. How I love that old cross where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Do we cherish the old rugged? Do we cherish Jesus? Cling to him? Right? Say, yes, I receive it, Lord. I, I, I accept exactly what you say. That is the way it is. I'm not looking for any other way around it. That's it. I can no longer fellowship in this fellowship because it's not speaking the truth. They're not receiving you, Lord. They'll come on the day of the Lord and say, Lord, Lord, he'll say, go away from me. I don't know you. You never received me. You had an appearance of godliness, but you denied the power. You denied my love. That's in the truth. You didn't want me to love you. Eh? You didn't want me to love you. Every time I tried to give you the truth, you rejected me. And now I reject you. Because they did not receive. They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. See? How are we going to be saved? By the truth. By the truth. 1 Timothy 4.16 Paul said to Timothy if you will take heed to yourself and to the truth, you will save your soul and those who will come along with you will be saved. If you will take heed to the truth, if you receive it. Paul said that to Timothy. Oh, Satan is afraid of the anointing. No. 
Satan is not afraid of the anointing. Right? Satan is not afraid of the anointing. And uh, the demon possessed man. He said, Don't don't come near me, Jesus. But the devil didn't say that, did he? <laughs> The devil didn't say that when he was in the presence of the Lord. Oh, don't come near me. The devil went near him. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, don't come near me. Did he say that to Jesus when he's going up the high point of the mountain? Oh, don't walk too close to me, Jesus. You're too anointed. It's just hogwash, isn't it? It's like that uh, mongrel breed teaching of Jesse supplanters, I mean do planters, I've been to heaven. If he's been to heaven, look, I, 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 I don't know what to say. If he's been to heaven, I, I'm, uh, what, Elvis, revisited. Been to heaven. A man who's been to heaven what would he want with possessions? What would he want with gold and silver and rings on his fingers and bells on his toes and, and, and a temple or a church that looks like a menagerie of some sort? What would a... Hey? If we were to really go to heaven, whether in, in as we are or spiritually, and we see it, it is just totally... We, we would, we'd never waste our time with the rubbish possessions of this earth. Never, ever. It wouldn't even enter our minds. You'd be teaching people to live in a tent. You'd be promoting bus shins. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the way to go. Eh? Shipping containers would be the go. Get that old... Saw out. <laughs> Cut a few windows in there. Hey? Glory to the Lamb. Satan is afraid of the anointing. Oh. Look, this Joyce Meyer's got no fear of God whatsoever. <laughs> no respect. But they flock, don't they? Don't they flock? You say, oh, that's a bit hard. Well, what does the scriptures say? They turn their ears away from the truth. And they gave preference to the fables of men and women. They, oh, look, if there's anything that makes God Almighty Yahweh rock, it's that people would consider their own oracles or the oracles of men and women above the oracles of God. Because he puts his word above his own name. Come on, read the scriptures and you'll see that clearly. We see the Lord's response to people who turn their ears away from the true prophets. It says in 2 Thessalonians 2.11 For this reason, because they turned their ears away from the truth. Oh, we're not listening to you. We're not listening to that coming out of your mouth. We're going to go to a church that doesn't talk like that. We like the fables. And you see what God says clearly through Paul to the Thessalonians. For this reason... God sends them strong delusion. Strong delusion. Hey? Can you say amen? Sends them strong delusion that they would believe the devil. I mean, he's an outright liar. And how many people do you know? So I'm not listening to that pastor of yours. I'm listening to the devil. I'd rather listen to the devil. 
even though they don't say that. But they do say, I don't want to listen to that pastor of yours. He's too hard line. He wants me to give up all my sin. <laughs> that pastor of yours expects me to be selfless. That pastor of yours, he wants everyone to be a saint. Get rid of him. Hey? Get rid of that bloke. You're going to ruin all your carnal life. Hopefully. Second Thessalonians 2.12 That they all may be condemned who did not do the truth. They did not believe Jesus. But they had pleasure in unrighteousness. See? Lovers of pleasure. Not lovers of God. Them and their families. Eh? Lovers of pleasure. Not lovers of God. Headstrong and haunting. Who cares about him? Jesus, my Lord. Right? Their men, their families. Right? Lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God. It all uh, knits together, doesn't it? It all knits together. The Word of God all intertwines and like a three strand cord. Right? Judgment, righteousness, and loving kindness. Right? Cords that cannot be broken. The word of the living God. We need to lay hold of the truth before the silver cord is loosed and the pitcher broken at the fountain. Before the day we die. Only this week I got news of a man that rejected the truth. Sister Sue gave him a book, a very wealthy man. And you know, his house is just like a, a madhouse now. He got my book and put it in the basement and left it there in the dust. And now he's facing divorce. His son rose up and bashed him. His other son bashed a girl stupid because she stole his car. His court cases, hatred, resentment, bitterness. He didn't have to have any of that. Oh, how I wanted to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not come. Now look at your house. Have a look at it. What a mess! Rejected the truth. Chose the lie of the devil. Hey? No fear. No reverence for God or his prophets. I send you wise men. Prophets and scribes, Jesus said. And he said, look what you've done to them. You stoned them and run, out, run them out of town and rejected them, hated them, 
despise them. I don't like that prophet Micaiah. He's always saying things that aren't good about me because there's nothing good about you. Surely there's another prophet that's going to tell me what I want to hear about me. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Just give me money. Oh, 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 oh. That's what I want. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Just give me money. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we've seen the results of the money man, Mr. Millionaire, with his divorce and his broken house and his children bashing him and there's going to be end up court cases and jail and resentment and hatred and unforgiveness and sickness and sickness of the heart and whoa could be clogging of the arteries and then death and what after that hell wages of sin is death give to god his eternal life through the one lord jesus Those who will not listen to the great prophet Jesus, they will be utterly destroyed. Acts 3, 23. Those who will not listen, those who turn their ears away from the truth will be utterly destroyed. They'll be handed over to the devil first. And he can lie in their, in their ear day and night and they suck it up and believe it. And turn around and say, yeah, that prophet is insane, he, he, he's mad and he's a fool. That was Jose 9, 7. No fear. No fear, no salvation, I can tell you now. Hey? No fear, no salvation. Nowhere in the scriptures do we find that Jesus tells us. Nowhere are we told that Satan was afraid of Father, Jesus or the Holy Ghost. Nowhere! Let alone an anointed disciple of Jesus. <laughs> Sister, the devil was not afraid and is not afraid of the anointed one, Jesus. Jesus the Christ. He's very arrogant, the devil. Very disrespectful, proud, evil. <clears throat> Fear God and keep his commands. I tell you this much. The devil one thing he is afraid of in one respect it's not really a fear it's a dread that you give up your sin your known sin. That's what he dreads. He hates that. He doesn't really. He's not really afraid of it. He just dreads that you would live a holy life. <laughs> oh, he, he can't get his victory then. Every time he gets a victory over uh, 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 a human, he, he snubs his nose at Jesus. He said, "Look, they're listening to me. They're not listening to you." They're listening to me. <laughs> the liar, Satan. They're not listening to you. There's no fun in what you got to offer, Jesus. Remember, do you remember they're born of the flesh originally? They're born in sin. They love it. Men and women love darkness. The light shone in the darkness. But men and women love darkness more. 
It's like Judas loved money more than Jesus. But he didn't hate Jesus. Right? You know once you're giving up your known sin and living a holy life. Let me finish up by saying that whether you're a, you know, a pastor or teacher, evangelist, prophet, <clears throat> whether you have a few or many gifts given to you by God or whether you're a big giver financially or it is no guarantee of salvation. The anointing on your life is no guarantee of salvation. It's not a guarantee. Because the Holy Ghost cannot lead you where you don't want to go. He cannot lead you. And these are the sons of God who are led by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 14. He, he cannot lead you where you will not submit to go. The Holy Ghost wants to lead us in paths of righteousness. He wants to be our staff. He wants to lead us in, 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 in the way of the Lord or the doctrine of the Christ but he can't do that if we say no to him it grieves him away that's why people they don't have a lot of truth John 16 13 and 14 when he the paraclete the Holy Ghost comes he he will guide you and lead you into all truth. That's where he's going to lead you, in the truth. He's going to lead you in the truth. He's not going to lead you in error. He's going to lead you in the truth. So who's leading George Meyer? The liar. The devil. <laughs> and Benny Hinn. The Crefro Dollars. The Michael Yusufs. All those who play the Judas. And they may have had the truth, but they turned aside. From it. They no longer endured in it, did they? If they had it at all. So, let me finish by saying I, I don't like people lying to me, and I don't like people lying to my brothers and sisters. So, hence, I preach as such. I preach as thus. I teach as thus. Father doesn't like it either, or Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. He, he, he doesn't want anyone lying to his brethren. Eh? See, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. But remember... The devil accuses. He's got no proof. He's only accusing. It's not substantiated. We need substantiation for it to be valid. Whatever it is. Otherwise it can't be justified, can it? It comes under the heading of a lie. It's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren of brothers and sisters of Jesus. Who are the brethren of Jesus? Luke 8 21 tells you, they're my brethren who hear my word and do it. Oh Paul Sheen, you're always accusing the brethren. Who are you talking about? Oh Hillsong. No. Do they do what Jesus says? Does Joyce Meyer do what Jesus says? Kenneth Copeland? Benny Hinn? Michael Yusuf? 
They all sell the word. They all cross over the scriptures. That the spirit and the bride say, come and drink of the waters of life and the doctrine of the Christ free of charge. And tell others to come and get it for free too. And tell them to faith up. And take faith in God that God will cover their expenses and provide all they need through his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Can someone say amen? amen. Oh, you know, uh, uh, Satan is afraid of the anointing. Oh, hogwash. That's just absolute lies. <laughs> tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Just give me money. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's what I want. Lovers of money. Lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God. Headstrong and haughty. Who cares about him? Jesus, my Lord. Lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God. Everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.